African nations, Doug and Angie Pittman. Would y'all stand? Would y'all give them a big hand? We're glad to have them here. <laughs> Doug been with us before. And then Pastor Richard Amador to the Native Americans. Rich, would you stand, my friend Rich? Amen. Retired last month, and uh, so we'll be seeing him off and on as he travels, but Rich and I have been together a long time. We were actually together the other day, Don, and this is what we said to each other. Me and him built one of the largest churches in this community with a pager. Y'all follow that? No Facebook, no cell phone, no nothing. Just You know how we done it? Mouth to mouth, face to face, person to person, talking to people, visiting. That's how you do it, amen? Second Timothy, amen. That's, it's, the, it's what... Uh, Paul told Timothy, you tell faithful people, they'll tell others. Yeah. Amen. Uh, we're going to leave everybody in here tonight except for Sheila's bunch. Is that right, Sheila? Amen. And, uh, and then, like I said, we'll take it. Josiah was really good tonight, man. The band, I commend you guys. Yes. You sounded good. I know you're, kind of about, you're about two-thirds band tonight. Actually, you're less than that because you had Don. <laughs> good to have Don Nash in the house. Amen. I mean, I mean, David and, and, and Don and, and Ramirez out laying brick today and then turn around and come to church, you know, and get ready for it. I, I just love our church. It's not, not normal. We, we, we work. Yeah, it should be. It's what it should be. Amen. Um, it, it, yeah. Lord bless the children. Bye, guys. Y'all, you're welcome to go. You can leave and stay in the building. So, Annabelle, Annabelle. Annabelle. Love you. Bye, JJ, the boss. She goes she go turn around and wave. Yep, yep, yep. Amen. Uh, let me get introduced Doug to you real fast. I want him to have as much time as he needs here tonight. And uh, again, those that are watching on, on uh, live stream, we're glad that you tuned in tonight. Amen. Every first week, midweek. And this is a good crowd tonight. I appreciate you guys coming out. Amen. Just feels good. Feels good in the house. I mean, it just feels good to be here. But uh, Doug and Angie, we we're all in the same class together at International Bible College in San Antonio. And I did not know this, David, but Angie was in, uh, uh, what's the word again, Angie? You told me, a foster. You're in foster home, come, you know, in an orphanage for five, four or five years. Amen. I didn't know that, you know, so I was telling you about David's story. So uh, it's just wonderful how God directs our lives and puts us together. Now, Doug was involved with people I knew long before I knew Doug. I'm talking about Randy Willingham and the Mansells and all that bunch. And then I got saved. Amen. And Doug, to let you know just a little bit, uh, you know, I got a call a, a while back from my friend who, one of the guys that led me to Christ, called Randy Willingham, and then Bubba Cole. Well, I'm flipping through a, a little, little something here, and I found this picture. That's Bubba, the guy that led me to Jesus, and that's you, Doug. Well, you got to, I'll say it, no, I'll, I'll send you the picture, because I don't think I've ever remember you being that skinny. You know, and I tell David this all the time, well, get, you go ahead. You go, Doug told me the story, he said when he first married Angie, she made a big old pan of lasagna, and he felt like it was his duty to eat the whole pan to make her feel good, and she thought, what kind of glutton did I marry? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I love Doug. Uh, one more quick story. Remember, Doug, we're going to get donuts one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then the police showed up. Who does that? We are going to get, we are in college. Okay, we're in college. You got X amount of time between class, and everybody goes to get donuts. Okay? So Doug said, hey, you want to go get donuts? You had that, you had that uh, Ford truck. Amen. Uh, uh, shifter. You had shifted. I remember now. And we jumped in that old truck and we headed off that hill, down, uh, Hallelujah Hill. And, and, and then the cop pulls you over and he pulls us down the side road. And all I know is our friends are coming from the college to go to Dunkin' Donuts. And I want a donut. He, get, it's, he got pulled over, not me. So I jump out of the truck and I'm running past the cop, Sammy, on my way to catch a ride to go get a donut. I didn't think at all about what I was doing was wrong until he pulled his gun and yelled, spread them. <laughs> and I, he had me cross the police car, and everybody's going down the road getting donuts, and I'm assuming the position. We get back to class, and everybody goes, stick them up, you know. <laughs> but I didn't think nothing about running from the cops. I mean, I, was, I wasn't running from him. I was running by him to get to and He thought I was running away. You're welcome, Pastor Doug Pittman, to the... Doug, out of Thank you, Jerry. 
<laughs> oh, man. Hey, God bless you. <laughs> hey, walking down memory lane here. Amen. Yeah, you know, back to the story of the lasagna, you know, it's a conversation as a newlyweds we didn't have. And, um, and by the way, it's like 36 years now, right? And so uh, this year will be 37, but... Uh, and, and we never had the conversation, you know, she, and, and I thought I had to make her feel good about herself by eating everything she made. And then she felt like she had to keep dishing it out to, to satisfy me. And we never had the conversation of, oh, just a little's good, you know. So I was a 29-inch waist. Well, I'll tell you what, 30 and 31 never had a chance. I... And then it haven't looked back since, you know. Um, but, you know, God's good to us. And um, we, we, we live in San Antonio, Texas, and we travel to the nations. And we have two married kids and six grandkids. And, and, uh, and they live in the same city. And that, that's, that's really a blessing. And, um, and so it's really an honor to be with you here tonight in Crosby. And I like these in-person meetings myself. Um, you know, our entire schedule, uh, international schedule, was canceled uh, last year. And so what do you do when you have a, an international traveling ministry and, and you can't travel? Well, we did a lot on the Internet. And I, I, I tell you what, that's not, my, that's not my comfort zone, preaching into an iPhone, you know, and doing zoom meetings I, I like i like to how many of you like being together and you and there, you know there's a dynamic when we're here together that you you just don't get over zoom i mean and so uh and and i tell you what i i just honor you tonight you midweek attenders god bless you you i, I tell you what um uh, I can tell you, you're here because you're hungry for more of God. You, you're here because you know there's more and you want more. You've tasted a little bit of it, but you know there's more. And, and so it's, it's really good to, to be with you here tonight. And I trust that by the time we leave here tonight, that, um, that uh, you're going to be touched and blessed and raised into a new level of Jesus. You know, Jesus is here right now. He's in our midst right now and you know because he's here with us right now anything can happen amen and and a lot of times we we prejudge god what is possible by the boundaries we erect in our own mind not uh, based on who he is and what is possible and our brain talks us out of miracles and a move of god just like that you know but, I, but if we allow our, our spirits to tune in to, to Jesus, who He's here, and I know you guys have a phrase around here. What is it? You be you? No. You do you. I'm just saying, Jesus, you do you. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and He went about doing good, healing all who were harassed by the devil. And has He changed any at all? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and He's here right now, and He can't help but do some good for us tonight, and I like that. They, you know what, David over here, it's his fault, man. He's got me coming in hot right now because I, I just love what he was talking about, and uh, that, that God is a miracle-working God. That's who he, he is. That's what He does, and, and He begins with impossible, you know. And, and this book right here is a testimony Page to pay from cover to cover of a supernatural God intervening on behalf of weak, frail humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, did, did, when, when you've been reading this book, did you ever find when Jesus did anything ordinary? I mean, was he logical about it? I mean, come on. I mean, it began with, and let there be light, you know. And then God prepared Jesus to come. You know, he's here right now and um 
And my main interest, you know, I grew up in church, but you know what? I'm just up to here with just having church services. I, I desire encounter. I, I desire uh, hearts to be touched and lives to be changed and people walk in the freedom that Jesus died for. And, and, and everything we receive is a gift from God. He says, come, you who are thirsty, come without money, drink. Why, Why is he saying that? Because everything we receive from God's a gift. Everything is a gift. So if you could just prepare your heart right now just to receive. See, God knows your needs even before He asks. He knows the state of your home, your job, your career, what's going on in your heart right now. He's aware of it all. He knows our needs even before He asks. But if we could just prepare our heart and let faith begin to rise up right now. And anticipation rise up and say, God, I know that you are a giver and a blesser. What you hear Sunday? Blessed to be a blessing. Isn't God the God of blessing? Amen. And so, so he, he wants to bless you tonight. And let's just, let's just raise up our hands one more time and say, Jesus, I want you to do you in my life. Oh, you're so good, Lord. We invite you in this place, Lord. And, and Lord, all we're interested is your kingdom come and your will be done here tonight in this place. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, hey, J Pastor Jerry, is it okay if I just say a little bit about what we're doing since we, we're not able to travel? Well, we've been doing a lot through Internet. And, and some of the places I've been to is like uh, Ukraine. We're working in about um, 12 different European countries. And people ask us, what do you do? I say, preach the gospel. And they look dumbfounded. And they say, like, well, don't you do anything else? You know? Because you wouldn't, you wouldn't understand societies that really don't even know what the gospel is. I mean, and we, we preach the gospel, all right? And we equip and train leaders and we mobilize the church into the harvest. And, and we just come alongside. Well, I happened to be in Ukraine in December one year. You talk about the frozen tundra. They talk about Green Bay, you know, Wisconsin being frozen tundra. And I think Wisconsin probably one of the coldest places in the world, okay? But I was there and I was going out with... Uh, a pastor friend of mine, and he would um, take hot food to to uh, widows and, and seniors that were were poor in the community. and And let me tell you something: when you, if you've ever been in a a country where it's been affected by communism, uh, and and you see these places that haven't really fully developed, and you still still see the thumbprint, okay, of that era of uh, of two generations. And, and so, so we're taking hot food. Well, here I am. I've got thermals on, okay? I've got fleece on. I've got my winter coat. I've got my gloves. I've got my hat. And I walk into this old communist flat, this concrete flat with rusted out appliances. And this 80-year-old woman is sitting at a table with the equivalent of a man's sports coat on for a winter coat and a scarf on her head. And, and she's just shaking, trying to peel a potato. I think she's going to try and make some soup or something. I said, my God, something, we, we got to help them. Because, you know, they don't have like Goodwill or, the, or Salvation Army that where you go. No, they wear stuff till it's burned. I mean, they, you know, they're, they just don't give stuff away because they don't have much. And so, so what we're doing right now is um, we're doing an outreach to our, our, our pastors, our national leaders there and uh, uh, in with Vladis, uh, Vladimir uh, Sergikov and Joseph Esenov. And, and so what we're doing, we're just sending them the funds and letting them do the outreach. We had wanted to be there in person, but we can't travel there. It's not even feasible. And so they know who needs it, and they can buy the things on their end. And so, so we're doing things like that to, to help people out, and we, we encourage people. We do training and preaching on the Internet. But how many knows that we can find all kinds of ways to serve? And, and find all kinds of ways to be Jesus to somebody that's hurting. And, and so, um, so that's what we're doing. And we just serve locally however we can. And, and, and boy, this has been a crazy time, hadn't it? And, and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time focused on, 
on that. But, uh, but we, we live in a, a world that's being shaken right now. Uh, you know, people's careers, uh, you know, people are nervous about their health, you know, you can't travel. You know, we're all living outside of our comfort zone in a way, you know. And, and to think into the future, we're like, well, we, we hope this thing can wrap up soon and, and let's, let's just get about life. Put all this behind us. And, and so uh, we, we, we live in an unstable world. But I, I want to, to give you some, some biblical truths tonight, okay? And, uh, and, and some, some unshakable truths for living, okay, in an unstable world, all right? And, and I trust tonight that you're anchored in hope. All right. If, if if maybe you're struggling with hope right now, and and, and you're you're trying to figure out which end is up, and 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 where is all this headed, and and and, and what about my family, and all those things, uh, tonight you can be anchored in hope. All right. And we look into the Word of God for this, okay? Uh, because the Word of God is the only thing that's settled. All right. And it's the only thing that is stable. And so we we look to the Word of God, and and I tell you what I want to know what God said because his word does not return void okay it prospers the thing into which it's sent it doesn't return to him void it's a prevailing word and so I, I want to spend my life learning what he has said because I tell you what there's a lot of opinions out there there's a lot of theories out there all you got to do is scroll down Facebook and you'll you'll have everybody's opinion everybody has a world stage now to uh, you know uh, to to voice their opinion and and all this but I tell you what that'll take you down some dark roads roads if you just paid attention to that all day long but how many knows that in God's word we find hope we find truth and and so and I've, I've really believed tonight can be a, a breakthrough night for some of us here you know because we live in a pressurized world but you know something we've got a secret weapon <laughs> we've got a secret weapon on our side and I want to sort of bring a word tonight uh, about being gripped by God and, and to do this I want to turn to uh, Isaiah the 41st chapter and, and I'm going to just sort of read some of the uh, excerpts from this um, uh, this passage of scripture and and I, I find, I tell you what, when I read through this, I, I just become emboldened in who I am, okay? How many knows if you struggle with identity, you, you're going to struggle with life? And if you know who you are and who your God is, uh, that's going to help you through life. And so, and you know what? This year could be your best year ever if it's your best year spiritually. Folks, it's time for us to go deep. It's time for us to press in. You know, casual Christianity and, 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 and surface Christianity, uh, we, we've got to lay that aside. It's time to go deep because our God is inviting us to know Him, to walk with Him, and, and He has promised some things. And, and so, but if we don't know what He's promised, we don't know what to lay hold of, what to possess, and what to activate in our life. So, so we, we go to the Scriptures, and, and I tell you what, the world can be having pandemic. The world can be having economic ups and downs, changes of governments. But I want you to know today, the church is alive. Amen. The church is not going anywhere. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the church, which is God's people. We are His body. And Jesus is not going anywhere. He can, look, He can bless in the midst of a famine. He can heal in the midst of a pandemic. Amen. He can restore what seems to be unrestorable against all the odds, against all odds. You know why? He's a supernatural God. And tonight, somebody, because your faith is rising up, is going to have a supernatural turnaround in a situation. Amen. You, I don't know what burdens you may have come in here tonight. David, man, you're making me come in hot tonight. I'm telling you, this is all your fault. You got on this and...
and you got me revved up like at a pep rally, man. And, and so, but I tell you what, whatever burdens you've come in today, you do not have to leave with that burden. Amen. We can leave them with Jesus, every single one of them, and it doesn't matter how big it is and or insignificant in our eyes. He loves you. He's for you. He's saying, bring it to me. Amen. And I believe that this message is going to be a blessing to you tonight. Why? Because Jesus is here right now. Amen. Anything can happen. Hey, somebody say anything can happen. Anything can happen. In the presence of Jesus. It reminds me of a, a small, small meeting uh, we were having in, in Berlin, Germany. And, and, and the meeting area probably wasn't as wide. Maybe, maybe wide as the pulpit to the baptistry. And about as long, yeah, as a platform here. That was the whole church, you know. And about 20 people were packed in there. And they were excited because, because that was huge for church attend. See, in, you know, East Berlin and Czech Republic, highest concentration of atheists in the world. 0.01% for you numbers crunchers. One hundredth of one percent believe the Bible is authentic and Jesus is the Son of God. One hundredth of one percent. They, they say you worship and you pray to an invisible God. Well, you have a form of mental illness. You know, you need a crutch for life. So you made all this up, this utopia and this God, but we're educated and we know there's nothing beyond all this and they don't even want to talk about church or God because it's a worthless discussion. It's not even worth talking about. And they turn around and they walk away. And so, so you have people serving in that kind of a social environment uh, preaching the gospel. But here we are. And so the, the main translator uh, couldn't make it that night. It was on a Friday night. And they were like, what will we do, you know? And so I can't speak German. I can do a, a couple of greetings and then try and finish everything up in English. But, uh, but, but here I was going to preach a gospel message. And so they thought of a young girl that hadn't been to church in years, um, but could, could translate. She could speak English. She could speak German. So they call her up to be my translator at this gospel meeting that night, okay? So I, I don't know her from anybody, and, and so we just greet, and so, so here we go. Now, she's having to translate everything I'm saying, all the scriptures I'm reading. And, and so, and, and about the middle way through, she starts, like, having some kind of a fit. And I'm looking over, like, what's wrong with her? She's, she's weeping, she's bending over, and for a German... That happening in front of people is very, very embarrassing, okay? And they, they have a lot of personal pride. And, and, and she's going, I'm looking at the pastor and I'm looking at her and I'm like, where do I go from here? Well, are you okay? You know, it just, and so she got herself together and we finished the message and the presence of God was so real and, and you know, and, and everybody's responding to the word of God. And she came to me afterwards and she said, let me explain what happened back there. She says, I've been away from God and I've, I've been in a very abusive uh, relationship, uh, physically, the, the divorce, um, and just, I'm just so full of, I was so full of hate and bitterness and, and just disbelief, you know. But, but what happened while she was just having to say the words that I was saying and hearing the truth and having to go through her conscious state and she was, she was repeating it. It was like her, I was preaching about the love of God and something in her heart just began to open up just a little to consider the love of God. And it's like the Holy Spirit just drove a truck through the gate and she had an encounter with God right there in the middle of the sermon and she said... I heard chains fall to the ground, and I am free. Amen. And I was like, well, that's never happened before, folks. Jesus is here to set us free. And, and he doesn't want any of his children to carry the burdens of the world. Some of us are carrying burdens we don't need to be carrying.
They're meant for him to carry, okay? They're, they're meant for him. And when we carry the weight of the world on our shoulders, it begins to affect our life. It begins to affect how we see life, the decisions we make, how we feel about things. And, 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 and we, we, we lose sight, okay, uh, of God's plan and purpose because we become so weighed down uh, with life as it is. But you know what? There's help. Everybody say, help is on the way. All right, I believe the Word of God is going to wet your whistle. Some of you are going to leave with a little spring in your step. You're going to feel the wind begin to blow in your sails. You're going to feel refreshed and renewed tonight. Why? Because that's just who God is. And if we open up and let the seed of God's word fall into some fertile soil, it'll become fruitful in our lives. So I'm just here cheering you on that, that you're here tonight and, and you're hungry for more. And so I want to talk to you tonight about being gripped by God. Being gripped by God. You know, we were singing this song tonight, you know, that uh, I belong to you, you know. Um, and, and I trust this, this could bless you here. Beginning with Isaiah 41, verse 10, it says, Fear not, this is God speaking, for I am with you. Don't be dismayed, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Then he goes on to say, Behold, all those who are incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing, as those who strive with you shall perish. You will seek them and not find them. Those who contend with you, those who war against you shall be as nothing, as a non-existent thing. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not. I will help you. Can you say that? I will help. I want you to know you're not alone tonight. You've got some help. And you've got a secret weapon against uh, all the winds that are contrary, everything that's blowing, the things that are happening in our nation. You can look at all the headlines, but you can say, but you know what? That's what it might seem like, but I've got some help. I have some heavenly help, amen? And I want to examine this tonight. You know, there was a uh, major uh, insurance company that, that coined the phrase, you're in good hands with... You remembered, right? That was a catchy tune, right? And, and you know, it was, it was genius on their part because there's something about knowing you're in good hands that warms your heart. You know, there, there's something uh, about that that makes you feel like, you know what, somebody's got my back. You know, somebody's with me. I'm in good hands. Uh, somebody's going to care for me. You know, when, when you're, you're saying, hey, can anybody recommend a good mechanic? You can say, hey, hey, I know this guy over here. Yeah, you know, he's great. Go over there. You'll be in good hands. Right? You say, hmm. I like the way that sounds. There's something about that, that phrase. And I want you to know tonight that, that there are scriptural references about the hand of God. And if we could examine uh, the, the mighty helping hand of God, it's going to help you with some of your situations in life. He says, I will help you. Fear not, you worm, Jacob. <laughs> now look, he wasn't talking down to Jacob. He wasn't making fun of Jacob. He was basically saying, without me, you can do nothing. All right? The, 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 the hand that will bless you, I will turn it against your enemies. Amen? Why is that? Because of covenant. When, when, when David the shepherd boy showed up and there was this big old giant spewing out threatenings against the, the armies of Israel, and David showed up and everybody was hide, hiding behind the rock and the king was in the tent and they needed a champion that day, David shows up and says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? See, right away on the battlefield, David, David recognized covenant. Wait a minute. What y'all scared for? God's in covenant with us, not with Him. I think David could have whooped any army that day because he understood covenant, who his God was, and that, and that God was for him, and God had not made any alliances with any of your enemies. 
Amen. Sickness wants to come to your door like a trespasser and he wants to rob you of health. Amen. He'll come as a thief and want to rob your wealth. He'll come as a trespasser on the land that God has given you and he's going to try and steal it back time and time and time again. But you just stand your ground, grit your teeth like a, like a bulldog and you say, no, you're not getting mine. In fact, I'm getting back everything you've stolen from me. Because why I'm in covenant with my God. All right? We got to understand. See, the Israelites forgot who their God was that day. They forgot that He had made covenant with them. And Pharaoh and, and the Egyptians or the Philistines had come over into Judah, which God had already given them. He came as a trespasser. Tonight, we need to kick some of the trespassers out trying to come in and terrorize us. I know what it's like to wake up in the morning and the devil's got you by the throat choking the life out of you saying you're not going to have enough. You're not going to make it. You're finished. You want to have a heart attack even before you get breakfast. And you take your flesh by the throat and you go into the presence of God and you start worshiping God and you start getting back into perspective of who I am and who He is and He calls me His and He has made a covenant with me. And what He is saying is, you're going to look around for your enemies. You're going to look around with those that come against you. You're not even going to be able to find them. Why? Because a hand that's for the, His children, the hand of blessing that comes to His children, is a hand of war against His enemies. Amen? The same hand that can bless you and bring you through to victory tonight will destroy your enemies. And whatever's coming against you personally, your household, your body, your finances, your mental state, you need to rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus because Jesus leads us in triumphal procession all day long, all night long. The victory is yours. The enemy wants you to be laid down. I'm, ta- I'm coming in hot right now. Uh, uh, he, he wants you to be overladen right now with burden and with fear and with anxiety. Where is this? Where is it all going? Oh, the virus thing. Where is the economy headed? Oh, we got a new president. What's going on with our life? You've got to get rid of all that stuff and focus on who the king is. Come on. Come on. Who the king is. And who you are, how he thinks about you. You see, we got a weapon. We got a hand of blessing that's in our favor. See, the odds can be stacked against every one of you, but with Jesus, he will turn the odds in your favor. Amen. Amen. So here we go, and he's saying, You know, I, I am the Lord. Your God, I take hold of your right hand saying, don't be afraid, I will help. Everybody say, I have help tonight. I have. See, you don't have to know how it's going to work out. You just have to know the one who's going to work it out. The way maker. Even when you don't see it, even when you don't feel it, he's working on your behalf. He's working it all out. <laughs> he, he's the one who can foretell the end all the way back to the beginning. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He says, I am the Lord. Fear not, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. Again, he says, I will help. Is God trying to say something to them? He's trying to say, don't be afraid. I will help you. I will help you. You see, that's so important because his kind of help is a help I can't get from other humans. His kind of help is a help I, I can't get from other institutions. Hey, there are things that I need in my life the government can't help. Okay? There are things in my life that, that, that I don't have enough friends to work it out. There are things that I need when I, my back is against the wall and I have no resource within my human frame and I cry out and all I know to do is say, God help me! That might be my most powerful prayer. Lord, I don't even know how to pray about it. I don't even know what to do about it. My back's against the wall. It's coming in like a flood. And Lord, if you don't show up, I'm not going to make it. Lord, save me. Lord, help me. 
Oh, I want you to know there's one whose throne is high in the heavens and His kingdom rules over all. He's bending low to hear the cries of His children tonight. He he listens and He knows. He's, He's encouraging. Israel says the Lord and your Redeemer, the Holy One, of Israel. First of all, let's just consider the, the promise maker right here. I am the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. The Almighty God. Is there anyone more qualified to make this promise than Him? You know, consider His credentials. Right away, He says, I'm the Lord. He wanted them to know it was Him making the promise. It was Him taking the initiative. You see, God has always taken the initiative toward people. Man has never sought after God. God has always sought after men. And you know what His specialty is? It's to reach down with His long arm of grace and pick us out of low, dark pits. Some of us were so low when when grace found us, we had to look up to see the bottom. He sought you out. He leaves the 99 to go find the stray ones. He he didn't come for the healthy. They don't need a doctor, he said. He came to seek and to save those who were lost. You see, God has always pursued men. He's always running after men. His grace is chasing you down. I remember Randy Stonehill had a... Some of you too young to know about him. He, he had this song called Hound of Heaven. I remember listening to that. I mean, God is sniffing you out. He knows where you are. He's going to find you. But anyway, I want you to know tonight that you are not alone. God has not overlooked you for a second. And you're not invisible to Him. He, he's divinely watching over you so He can divinely help you tonight. Alright? And He wants to take the burden that you have. He wants you to give it to Him. And for you as a child just to simply receive what He wants to exchange for all that tonight. God is hot after you. You exist by the will of God. You're saved by the will of God. You're here tonight. Hungry. Why? Because His loving kindness keeps drawing you to Him. You want more. You've tasted a little bit, but you're wanting more. You're wanting more. But it's so easy for us, even though we walk with the Lord, sometimes to cling to burdens. Sometimes. But He says... 19 times in this chapter, he refers to it like, I, I am, and I will. He's the one with all the initiative. Yeah. You, you look at that, like, you read through this chapter of Isaiah 41, he says, I'm going to do it, I'm the Lord, I will do this, I will do that. You know, God, and, and sometimes in our brain we're thinking we're trying to get God's attention. Like, hey God, look over here. It's me. You know, we, we, we try to do things to get his attention. And sometimes we feel like he's so far away and that, that somehow he's interested in everybody else but us. But I want you to know tonight, he hadn't forgot you. He knows your name. And he's even numbered the hairs of head, uh, on your head. He knows every integral part. And he loves you with an everlasting, ferocious love. And see, many times our struggle is not that... We doubt He is able, but sometimes we doubt, will He? I know He can, but God, this, you know, this is different than everything else that we've ever gone through. Are you willing? The promise maker, I am the Lord. You know the account of creation, it says it like this, He spoke and it happened. He commanded, and it stood fast. Amen. By faith, we understand that the world was framed by the Word of God, and that everything we see was made from what can't be seen. He is the Almighty God. He is the Almighty. And He says, I'm the Lord that says you don't be afraid. 
We should not be acting right now like the world is acting. We've got hope. We've got a Savior. We've got an Almighty God that says, You're my children and I'm watching after you. Don't be afraid. I do. You, how many of you need help with something tonight? He said, I will help. That's not a trick question, by the way. He said, I will help. Oh, so let's look at this tonight. I've got just a couple of minutes. Consider his fatherly love. What he says, and I, I believe it's verse 13. It, it's, for I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand. You know, when, when our children were little, and I see some little ones around here tonight. When we would go shopping, we'd go to H-E-B or um, the grocery store into a crowded place. When we get out of the car, what's the first thing we do as parents? We'd say, take my hand. Take my hand. Wow, we know there's a busy street that has to be crossed. We know that there's a crowded mall that we've got to go through. And we want our child close to us. We want our child to know that we are there, that we're going to look after them, that we're going to care for them, that they have nothing to be afraid. Why? Because dad's there. Or in, in some cases, papa. We got six grandkids, three to nine years old now. And we, we have them a lot of times. And we're taking them by the hand. Why? Because we're we're watching over them. We're caring for them. If we could get the revelation of how much God cares for us, okay, we would, we, it would be easier to get us through our anxious moments and our fearful moments, knowing, knowing that He has said, I'm going to walk with you hand in hand, and I'm not letting you go. See, God has laid a grip on you, and He's not letting go. And nothing falls through His fingertips. And He will lead you through this life. And when the time is right, He's going to lead you on to your greater life. And He is not letting you go. Somebody say, I'm, I'm gripped by God tonight. That encourages me. Because sometimes life is beyond me. Look, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I'm not the most talented person. You know, because we can be educated. But we don't know everything. We might be skillful. But we can't do everything. We run into limitations in life. There's one word stamped across all human endeavor, and it's the word limited. But when the Creator of heaven and earth stretches forth His hand and says, Ah, take me by the hand. I've got you. Walk with me. It's then you begin to live beyond your human limitations because help is coming from a different realm. Heaven, it's, oh, it's coming from a heavenly realm. It's coming from a superior realm. You are now a son of the Most High God who comes to sit at His table that He's prepared uh, before you in the presence of your enemies. And you can take as much as you dare believe. And when you leave the table, there's still more left there because he's continually flowing he's continually giving he's not waiting for another walmart truck to pull up to his warehouse so he'll have something else to give out to those needy people on earth no he is the source he is the originator he is the creator. He said in Jeremiah, my people have committed two evils. They have rejected me, the fountain of living water, and hewn out for themselves cisterns that can't even hold water. Here I am. I am the source. I don't need any external power. I don't need any help at all. I create it all. Okay? And for God to pay your monthly rent or house note doesn't break the bank in heaven. Sometimes we think I'm asking something too big for God. His warehouse is endless. He creates that which does not exist. He, he doesn't have to wait for the first of the month to gather enough goods to try and care for His kids. He's the fountainhead he is the source and he says my people they've rejected me who is the source and they've looked to systems of men 
They've trusted in systems of men that are broken cisterns that can't even hold water. I don't know about you, but I tell you what, it makes me feel good tonight that I can call upon the one who can even create what I need and bring what is far from me into my hands with the Word. He is your God. He's not some dumb idol, has no ears to hear, no eyes to see. No mighty hand to move. I've got to get on with this tonight. All right. In closing, I've got 17 points. No. All right. Let's consider a few things about this. See, the, the right hand of God represents blessing. Blessing. God wants to bless you. Can He bless me in a pandemic? Yes. Can He bless me in the middle of an economic famine? Yes. He, he, you know, Isaac sowed in the midst of a famine, and, and the Bible says God caused him to prosper. You know, He's the one who gives us power to gain wealth. God caused. See, He's an active God. All right? He's a God of action. He's a God who is stirring. And when I pray to Him at that moment, I am reaching beyond my human limitations and I'm laying hold of His ability in a situation. I think that's why prayerlessness is a sin. Because prayerlessness is pride. It's saying, I got this. I can handle this. I can do this my way. But he says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. It's an act of humility. He said, how many of you know that you need God? And that without God, you can't do anything? First of all, it's a hand of blessing. Maybe this was a revelation that Jabez had in 1 Chronicles 4.10. When he says, bless me indeed, O Lord. Bless me indeed. And keep your hand upon me. See, one day Jabez looked down the fence line of his ranch and decided, this is too small. I'm getting squeezed in right here. I need enlargement. <laughs> Amen? He, he was feeling squeezed in. And he cried out to God, bless me indeed. And that your hand would be with me. He had a revelation about the hand of God. It's a hand of blessing. Keep me from evil. And you know what? God did not turn him away. Say, oh, you know, come on, man. What kind of prayer is that? No, it said the Lord granted his request. You know, I've decided I'm not going to contempt God anymore with small prayers. I'm going to ask for things that only God can do. That my brain is going to get mad at me. If I was to write it down, I'd be tempted to erase it and say, No, that's a little too much, don't you think? How can I ask something too large of my God? How can I ask something too big for the one who, who breathes and, and, and galaxies are formed? How can I ask Him for something that is too much? Who's infinite? And all that He is. Amen. Jesus gathered, you know, children. You know, His disciples were always trying to send people away. Oh, they're hungry. Send them away. Oh, they're crying after us. Send them away. I mean, those disciples really, they needed a lot of training. And even Jesus was like, oh, how long, you know. But, but, but here are these children. They, they were sending them away. And this is what the account of, of Matthew 19, 14 and 15 says. Leave the children alone. Do not forbid them from coming to me, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And after, everybody say, placing his hands on them. I like the amplified version. It says in parentheses, for a blessing. I don't know who these kids were, but to receive a blessing from Jesus, they were blessed. They may have grown up and were part of the early church. He reached out to them for one purpose, to 
bless them. And if He did it for those children, will He not do it for you and me tonight? Because see, once He does it for somebody, He will do it for somebody else. He's already exposed the heart of God. He wanted to, maybe you need a blessing tonight. Maybe your relationships need a blessing. Maybe your bank account needs a blessing. Maybe your physical body needs a blessing. I want you to know it's a hand of blessing. Hand of blessing. Oh, and, and not only is it a hand of blessing, but it's a lifting hand. I'll tell you what. Right now, under us all, what's sustaining us is the invisible hand of God. You might be going through a tough patch. You might feel like your prayers aren't even getting past the ceiling. And the contrary winds are blowing against you and you feel like you're running against the wind. It's even in those times that God is sustaining us. He's with us and He's lifting us and He's, He's caring for us even in those moments of time. I am your God. I will uphold you, verse 10, by the power of my right hand of righteousness. God will do right by you. He's sustaining you right now. And He will continue. You know what it says? Every good and every perfect gift comes down from a Father who puts the lights in the heavens and sustains the universe. He can sustain the universe and every molecule and every atom. Can't He sustain you and I of what we need? It's a healing hand. Matthew 8, 2, 3. A leper came and worshipped Him saying, Lord, if You're willing, You can make me clean. You, you think about this man and his hopeless condition, an outcast of society, and there wasn't a doctor that could do anything about it. You, wait, you think about the misery he woke up to every day. And, and, and the smell and the stench of the rotting flesh. Knowing that he can't ever have a normal life. He can't go to the mall like everybody else. He'll never ride a motorcycle. He'll never, he, he won't be able to go, to go to Cracker Barrel. And mingle with people. An outcast. With a disease there wasn't a cure for. And he comes to Jesus. He said, I know you can if you're willing. Now look what Jesus said to him. Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand. Everybody say his hand. And touched him saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. You know what Jesus revealed right then? That his ability and his willingness go hand in hand. And His willingness and His ability go hand in hand. You can have somebody who wants to help you, but they just don't have the money they can give you. They say, well, bless you, brother. They want to, but they can't. Maybe you come across somebody in their Maserati who has the money to help you with a need, but they keep looking straight ahead and push that gas pedal. He said, well, they, they could if they would. But what Jesus is revealing here and what we got to understand, that He is not only able, but He is willing. That's the heart of God. He touched Him. Some of you may need a healing touch today. It's a providing hand. Luke 9, 16, with fish and loaves. He, ble- he, he took, hey, he took a, a plate of fish and chips. Okay? When Jesus does lunch, there's leftovers. He blessed it and He broke it and gave it to His disciples to set before the people. 4,000 men. Hey, in that culture, that's at least fifteen to 20,000 people. They have big families. Okay? Who can take a plate of fish and chips and feed 20,000 people and have leftovers? Your God can! Some of you, He needs to touch your bank account. (laughs) Some of you are looking for a career move. Some of you are saying, I don't have enough money for a month. Who can help you today? He's a generous God. 
He's a generous, loving God. And He's holding back on nobody. But He will be unto us according to our faith. He's put no limits. All you got to do is say, help me, Lord. I need help. Can you help me, God? Can you help me? He revealed that He's a willing God, a providing hand. I'm finishing up. He's a delivering hand. Deuteronomy 26. Israel delivered from Egypt. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt. That's a place of the world, a, a type of sin with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with great terror, signs, and with wonders. A mighty hand. Oh, there's no addiction that can stand up to the hand of God. There's no form of, of, of bondage that can stand up to His touch. He is a liberator. And I proclaim over you tonight the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Be free in Jesus' name. You don't have to walk around in a prison house of your mind being tormented with past, being, being wrestled with in the, in the present. The hand of God is able to deliver you. It's a delivering hand out of terrible situations. Who would have thought? Who would have come up with the idea, okay, I'm going to send a wind... The sea is going to part. My people are going to walk across on dry ground. And when those who are pursuing them get in there, I'm taking the, the wheels off their chariots and I'm going to let the water crash in on them that I saved my people through. And I'm going to destroy the army that pursued my people. Who can do that but my God? You see, a lot of times we're trying to figure out how He's going to do it. But can you just bring it to Him to trust Him to do it? And if you need wisdom, ask for wisdom. If you need help, ask for help. He's a God who helps. He's got a mighty hand. You see, we have a mighty weapon that works in our favor in every season of life. Whether it's a pandemic or whether everything's going great, the hand of God is with His people. And it's a hand of blessing. And it's a keeping hand. The Scripture says that all His children, our names are inscribed on the palm of His hand. This is what Jesus said. My sheep hear my voice in John chapter 10. I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. I want you to know tonight that you're secure in Jesus. You don't have to be afraid of the devil. You don't have to be afraid. He says, I will help you. I've got you by the hand. Don't be afraid. I will help you. I'm going to finish with this scripture. The poor, this is verse 17 through 20, and I'm closing right here. The poor and needy seek water, but there is none. Their tongues fail for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them. Everybody say, God hears me. I will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers and desolate heights and fountains in the midst of valleys. I will make a wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and the acacia tree, the myrtle and the oil tree. I will. How many times is God saying, I will, I will, I will. I will set in the desert the cypress tree and the pine and the box tree together. Now here's the key that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this 
and the Holy One of Israel has created it. Oh, we serve a mighty God today who can bring rivers in desolate places. Who can, who can cause your enemies to go away from you. Amen. He can, he can cause the virtue and power of healing to flow into your body. He can bring supply from unknown sources. Because anything is possible. Anything. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. He doesn't want His children afraid, frustrated and worried. Oh, He wants you to know that His mighty hand is on your life. And He's going to keep you. And He's going to lead you. And He's going to touch you. And He's going to provide for you. He's going to protect you. He's going to keep you secure in Him. The mighty God. Oh, I'm just going to just close it like this. Because I don't have to pray for you. It's your faith that's rising up. How many of you, you're in a place right now where you can say, you know, I need, I need the hand of God. Because I'm at my wit's end and I don't know what to do. This is really beyond my strength and my knowledge, my expertise and my education. I need heavenly help tonight. I'm going to just ask you to just stand to your feet if you need the helping hand of God. Maybe it's a relational thing. Maybe it's children you're concerned about. Maybe, maybe it's you're, you want needing a breakthrough financially. You need a career change. Maybe there's people at work that are tormenting you and you need God to transfer them to another office. You need the help of God here tonight. I couldn't get away from this message. I wanted to preach something else, but I just felt like tonight is going to be bright. See, you can have your dignity or you can have your deliverance. Just stand to your feet. Don't worry about what... I, listen, I've learned when I need something, I don't care who, who, who knows about it, who thinks about it. I need a move of God in my life. Come on. Anybody else? Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else, you can have your dignity or your deliverance. And what you're saying is, God, I need you. I believe that you are able. I believe that you're willing. Thank you, God, for these who have stood. Now, I'm going to just invite you just to lift your hands to heaven right now and begin to bless the name of your Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. That He is infinitely able to supply whatever it is you need right now. I just speak freedom right now over bondage. I speak increase where there is lack. I speak healing where there's affliction right now in the body. Lord, I speak restoration to broken relationships. Lord, Lord, here we are. And just begin now to say, Lord, I need your help. Can you help me? Can you help me? You're the God of my breakthrough. You're the God who can do anything. Lord, I thank you that you've got me by the hand. Lord, I need you tonight. And Lord, I pray for testimonies to come. Lord, from what you are going to do in every life, everyone that's standing here, they'll come in with a testimony and they'll say, Pastor Jerry, oh, you, you just, you just, uh, it's just crazy. It was just such a God thing how he delivered me and he helped me he lifted me and provided for me oh hallelujah you know Angie, my wife Angie had two two surgeries we didn't have insurance at the time we were launching out into the mission field and and we were making adjustments in our life and trying to get everything and 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 she had surgery and it involved two hospitals okay and the bill came to us in tens of thousands of dollars and I and I'm like Jerry I wasn't even in a position to make a a payment plan with them <laughs> That's pretty low but I lifted that bill up to that. I said, my Heavenly Father, this is too much for me. Can you help me with this? I declare this paid in full. 
I put it on my desk. I went preaching somewhere in Kentucky, coming back through North Alabama. Angie called me. It was about a month later. She said, we got a letter. And stamped across the invoice. It's three words. Paid in full. Is he not able? Is he not willing? But our thing is, we go to our friends for help. We go to our boss for help. We go to Facebook for help. And rarely do we call on God for help. He said, come to my throne where you can find grace and help in the time of need. (laughs) I want you to know, can we just leave our burdens with Jesus tonight? Can you just, just that burden that's on your mind, just put your hand on your forehead. That burden that's on your mind right now, it's too much for you to handle. It's about to drive you crazy. Just take it. And lift it up to Jesus right now. Say, Jesus, I'm giving you this right now. And I thank you that you're able to do something about it. And I have help from heaven. Amen. God bless you. God bless you all. Amen. You're walking with the King. The Master who is able And God is able to make all grace abound towards you in every situation, regardless of the need, being fully sufficient in Him, having abundance for every good work and act of charity. The grace of God is pouring out to those who are humbling themselves. And they're saying, God, I need you tonight. I need you tonight. I need you. Oh, there's grace. There's abundant grace. Because the Lord, He says, I hear them myself. And what did he say about the Israelites in Egypt? I'm going down there and I'm going to take care of business. When he heard the cry, he loves to hear the cry of his people. God bless you all. Amen. I know I'm a little bit late, but please forgive me. God loves you. He's not overlooked you. You're not invisible. And he cares. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Jerry. Amen. Amen. Where's Travis? Travis, you go to the back door for me. Amen. Thank you, Doug. I just enjoy sitting in his presence. Amen. Amen. Have you ever known you were loved, but you, I know many times today we, we want to say it to one another. Did you know nowhere in the Word of God does Jesus say, I love you? He shows it over and over. Never says it. I don't even think, for God so loved the world. That's, yeah. That's, that's the scripture. It says that he loved the world. But nowhere does Jesus look at somebody and say, I love you. Come here, let me heal you. He doesn't say it anywhere. He just, you just know he does. And Doug, when you said that we don't ask big enough, I agree. We, we forget how big a God we serve, don't we? Amen. I mean, I, uh, I called Dennis today to check on to see if about getting the uh, live stream, to get it done, you know. And uh, I really wasn't asking him that Dennis I was going to tell you this I got a check in the mail (laughs) you just got that check in the mail I'm I'm talking about from y'all I'm talking about from out of state somebody watches us on live stream out of state send me a check to make sure that we can pay for a new live stream so they can keep watching us online Uh, that's I said man I'm just I forget just how good a God we serve amen he does do it all the time. Does it all the time. Amen. Pastor Richard, you come up here and close us in prayer. I got this right before I got, uh, got to church tonight. Hi, Pastor. Not sure who to contact, but my family would like to join the church. My two daughters accepted Jesus, and I'd like to get baptized. When you get these kind of messages before you show up, it makes you feel good to be a pastor, don't it? What do we preach on Sunday? Blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Be a blessing tonight. Right in front of you, a little offered envelopes. I need you to give an offering tonight. We want to make sure we bless uh, Pastor Doug. Amen. And what he's going to do tonight for Ukraine. Don't, don't walk out of here if you can be a blessing. If you can be a blessing in any way. If it's a 20, a 50, a 100. Amen. If it's a check you want to write out to the little country church and put for Doug. Amen. You can do that if you're doing it online. Uh, just when you walk by.
uh, Travis, just wave your phone at him. Just say, I'm giving online tonight. If you're watching us online tonight, you can give to the Little Country Church. Go to holywild.net slash give. Amen. Be able to give tonight and be a blessing in that way. One big announcement. Saturday morning, 9 o'clock, men's breakfast. Ladies, get your husbands out there. I had a lady tell me the other day, I just got to get my husband out there to the church. Amen. So get, get him out there to the church, sir. 8 o'clock, what would I say? I said 8 o'clock. I'm sorry. 8 o'clock. Be there at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Yeah, 9 o'clock for leftovers. They'll do it, too. They'll show for leftovers. I walked in. I, I saw Miss Judy. I said, Miss Judy, what are we going to have for the men's breakfast at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning? She said, biscuits and gravy and sausage. Woo! I tell you, that's one way to break a fast. Amen? By the way, I had some potato chips yesterday. Mm, I forgot how good they were. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Stand with me if you would. Don't forget your children in the back, Doug. Thank you again. Doug, ain't you on your go ahead toward the back so you can greet people as they leave. Amen. And again, uh, Travis has got the bucket you can give on your way out. If I don't see you Saturday, I hope to see you Sunday. Amen. Uh, we're filling up uh, out at New Caney. It's been kind of crazy out here. I'm, I'm going to see a surge. I believe it in the name of Jesus for this town, for this area. They need the little country church. We need them. Patsy, good to have you here tonight, Mama. Amen. Love you. Rich, come pray and close for us, if you would, sir. Love you, man. Father God, I thank you that we could come in your presence tonight, Father, and be fed your word that would encourage us and lift us up again. Father, we thank you that we've been called for this time as your remnant, Father, those that are staying faithful, Father, and that this word becomes life and rhema to us, Father God. Because, Father, we continue to seek. We don't give up. We press in, Father, to your word because we know you're so alive. I thank you for the Little Country Church and those that heard your word tonight, those that came alive in your word tonight, those that received you and the blessing of your hand, Father, because we sought your face tonight. We thank you. Blessings on here, Father. Let this place fill up, Father, with the lost and the hurting. Yes. Father, that they would, that the that W-I-N would take place in the Little Country Church. Bless all those that came. Father, those online, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you.